And now for a bedtime story with a side of butter. Authored by Vardoga. Narrated by a distinguished and entirely fake British gentleman. Once upon a time, in an alternate dimension that was identical to our own, but for the existence of unicorns and the fact that humans had evolved with a six-inch raptor-like talon on the left heel, there were two kingdoms called Pro-Omnis and Pro-Unis. Each kingdom had a king, and they were as different as crocodiles and strawberry shortcake. King Omnis was a rotund and ruddy fellow with a taste for buttered everything. While his official stance was that people should share all that they have with one another, so that no single person would have too much, and no other would have too little. He personally found life much more enjoyable when he got to have everything he wanted. Sometimes he feared that deep, deep, deep in their threadbare hearts, his subjects felt the same despite their apparent allegiance. And it did not help that pro Eunice's kingdom was right across the valley, with its amazing backless shoe factory and its strapping and jubilant leader. Where did he find the time to maintain those washboard abs while ruling a kingdom, anyway? And why did he always have an air of competence and drollery about him? He never told his people to share, and yet they did not ward nuts in their cheeks like so many squirrels. One day, after a buttery breakfast of buttered butterball turkey with buttered butternut squash on the side, King Omnis decided it was time to pay his neighbor a visit. For too many years, he had watched pro Unis grow bigger and better through his greasy monocle, with their only inter-kingdom interaction being the annual backless shoe for hodgepodge mixture of whatever they had in excess of trade. So, King Omnis mounted his crude wooden cart pulled by a powerful team of sewer rats and headed off across the valley. Two weeks later, he arrived at the massive gate of pro Unis. He knocked politely, as pro Omnisians are known for their courtesy to others, Open up. and waited for an answer. Slowly, the gate opened, and upon stating his business, he was promptly escorted to the glorious home of King Unis. He was then offered a chair and a cup of tea in the sitting room and was told that the king would join him directly. While well, he waited, though, the chair was a bit small and the tea was not buttery in the least. He marveled at the craftsmanship of King Eunice's home. Everything is assembled and embellished with such care, he thought. It's as if the people who worked on it had a very good reason to do the job properly. Shortly thereafter, King Eunice entered and gracefully took a seat in the chair adjacent to King Omnis. At this point, King Omnis was eager to know all about the secret of Pro Eunice's success. He bombarded King Eunice with questions to the effect of, where did you get all of these wonderful things? And why do your people have more than mine do? And didn't your kindergarten teacher teach you to share? And so on. To this, King Omnis answered calmly. The people of pro Unis desire only one thing. Then he paused for dramatic effect. And that is to become better. Who doesn't want more things and better things and new things? Who doesn't want better safety and better amusement and a better life in general? And it cannot be achieved simply by taking it from others. We must create and build and invent 
and all work in earnest, and with good reason to bring about that better life. And there is no end to it. It will only continue to improve in time. King Omnis thought about this as he picked at a rogue particle of buttered butterball turkey that was stuck between his teeth. And then suddenly he knew what he had to do. He stood up quickly and with determination, but it made him feel a bit dizzy, so he had to wait a second to regain his balance. And then he declared excitedly that he had devised a most clever plan that would solve all of the problems in Pro Omnis and bring a happiness to his people that they had never experienced before. And then he looked most sincerely into the eyes of his fellow king and said, we can all be as happy as you are here in Pro Unis, if only your people will share. So King Unis had King Omnis kicked out of his kingdom with the quickness of a startled unicorn. As King Omnis landed on his ass with a thunderous thud, he could faintly hear King Unis say in a tone that communicated slight inconvenience. Hmm. Don't give cherries to pigs. Little did King Omnis know that while he was away, some of his subjects had broken into his flat and discovered his hidden butter hall as they rallied together in anger and began filing out of Pro Omnis's ramshackle gate to come after him, they were fortunate enough to witness his embarrassing ejection from Pro Unis and his subsequent and surprisingly lengthy butter-lubricated skid thereafter. They began to laugh heartily, and it was the first real joy they had felt in all their lives. King Uni saw this and made a proclamation. Any and all of you may enter the kingdom of Pro Unis. Here you will be rewarded in proportion to how hard you work, and no one will have any right to take the fruits of your labor from you. The people could now be quite certain that their king was nothing more than a bloated, buttery pork. And so every last one of them ran, amazingly enough, and it clearly defined the formation out of Pro Omnis and into Pro Unis. Why would you ever spell it in that absurd?